And we're back to another episode of Let's Play Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. I'm your host, the RPG Guy. And when we last left off, we pretty much have this monstrosity to rebuild. And I'm using that pretty correctly. Um, this car is freaking destroyed. Um, and there's very little left of this Katsugiri Katsumoto. Um, to the point where I don't think there's going to be much to restore. It's mostly a complete rebuild from the ground up. I, I just don't see us keeping any of the real parts uh, for this car. Um, but we're going to do what we can. This is going to be ex on more, a bit more on the expensive side. And we're going to see what we can get away with and what we can't. But it looks like we've got the front right door and the mirror to that door. And we've got, hopefully bit more going for us um that's not that there's the back bumper but we need to check that anyway uh and the mirror so <clears throat> door and mirror let me go to body tuning katsumoto Okay, we got two front bumpers here. We'll go with the that one, that one. We have a C and a B. We'll just go with B's for now. If we get another one, we'll do C. Okay. And then for the rest of the car, we got the left door. Fenders are gone. We don't have. Wait, what door do we have here? We have the right door and mirror, so we need the left door. We need the window. Got a hood. Got lights. Got the. We need the left mirror. The right side mirror. I think we got everything there. So let's go ahead and rebuild. I guess I fixed the the trunk. So that was kind of a waste. Bought an extra trunk, bro. Yes, I did. But we'll sell the old trunk, so it's not a problem. Uh, we'll need two license plates. Just go with Alaska. I think that's the whole part of that part of the car. We're not done yet though. We need to do two other things. We need to do the interior. What am I doing? Uh, interiors. <laughs> At least they somewhat made it so it kind of matches. And you're not kind of stuck piecing together the inside yourself. Alright. And then let's go ahead and put this back. Let's go ahead as well and do this.
because of the issue with the tire being attached to the gearbox through a series of other things, we'll, we'll get the tire work done now. Yeah, if I want access to the gearbox, I'm going to have to have access to the underbelly of this car. Or rather... work. They usually don't text me this late. Alright, what was I doing? Oh yeah. <clears throat> Back to what I said, I need to fix the tires. And we're missing the other tire, so really we gotta disassemble the one tire and then purchase everything else. Okay. Are we working with under here? A whole lot of nothing. So. I think I see that already. At this point, we can lower the car. To do something, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Separate these two parts because even if we can repair this tire, tire's rim, we even if we can repair the rim, we need a, a whole new set of tires here. Oops, what am I doing? No. Let's see if we can repair the tire. So we were able to do that. Um, what are we talking about here? Two hundred five, forty-five, sixteen. Wait a minute. What's the rim size here? Sixteen. Two hundred five, forty-five, sixteen. Go. To be fair to, we should be getting experience for any time we have to mess with machinery, <clears throat> especially machinery that requires skills. I'm just going to throw that out there. Now, the one thing we haven't really been fiddling with, but I'm going to start fiddling with it when I... I'm going to try it out and see what I learn from it is going to be when I start working on cars for cash, I'm going to start turning those parts into junk and seeing because it looks like there's ways to upgrade certain parts and whatnot. And I want to do that under a very set of specific scrupulations, I guess, stipulations, rather scrupulations, stipulations. And I want to, if I can actually upgrade parts, that's great. The thing is, is that my concern is that I'm going to waste these parts on cars I don't care about, or lesser cars. So if my theory in my head is this. Whenever I repair cars to sell them, I'm probably going to keep the old parts and see if I can upgrade them or turn them into scrap and try out the scrap mechanic. Because it looks like there's something to do with the scrap mechanic, we just haven't tried doing it yet. But again, I do have some mild concerns. We also have some luxury parts in storage. And I haven't mentioned that, but in other games, a lot of the storage parts, and if we have a free time at the end of one of these episodes, I'm going to go as far as, say, um, give me a second here. Uh, I'll open them up and we'll take a look, but we're probably not going to use any of them on any cars out the door. I'd rather take a car that's completely decked out 
and then up and that's one of our better faster cars to see if we can push it to the maximum with parts that we find kind of a thing and we could always add the nicer parts to cars throughout the, the game so again it's not something i'm that worried about at this exact moment so i'm not jumping out of my chair to go use those parts right away when they're not necessarily finite but it's a lot of it's luck based and rarity based and all that and you don't want to put i don't want to put myself in a position where i use the parts on a different car that was could have been saved for a better version of the same car i know that sounds weird and insane but that's the best ex explanation i can give you okay So two things. We need to go grab the engine block. Alright. There we go, there we go, and there we go. So the stuff we know we can work with. Put this stuff on. We don't have to look at the bottom of the engine at all going forward. in here that way we can easily get to the next step Right, so we can see it all better. That stuff.
a 14 sock here probably. Excuse me. We slowly put this in. This won't be in enough. Four or five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's why. I thought it was four for some reason. This on I think we're going to need one more of those too. The last one of these we built kind of said we needed one. No, oh, no, I guess not. So I bought an extra idle roller that I didn't need. Oh, well. Okay, but that looks pretty good. I think the engine is done. So we are back into the car. And oh boy. <clears throat> okay, we don't need this or the idle roller or the belts. Servo, battery, those. That's all electrical. And then we need that and that. This is the cover. There we go. Alright. Just to make this easier to grab. <clears throat> I 
Okay, I think the engine area, other than the exhaust manifold, because we need to put this in first. I know also there's no starter. So I know I know that we'll have to do that. So let's grab a starter. Um Let's get this going so we can figure the rest of this out. Nice. Okay. Now I gotta put the starter back in. It may even be a cover for this too. This one used to have covers on it. I don't know if it does anymore. Oh, no, it does. Okay, let's refill all of our fluids here. And we're not quite done. I was getting ahead of myself. I hadn't done the uh, fuses. Thought about it for a second. I'm like, I don't think I've done the fuses. We do have the top of the fuse box, I believe, though. So that should be all right. All the fluid should be done. Just because I know. All right, let's see here. Three of those, one of those, one of those, two of those, one of those, two of those. All right, so the fuse is done. Your new shaft on there. All right, okie dokie. Let's see. 
I'm like 90% sure we don't need to deal with the engine anymore because we've got the starter on, everything's connected. And just because I know we're going to need it. Okay. <clears throat> Now we need to deal with the suspension. And we are missing pretty much part of the right side here um, to a degree. So we know for a fact we're going to need one of those. Start with that. We're going to need two, four, so eight bushings. Achievement Wrench Master. Must have been because we've disconnected so many parts. Some of this might be salvageable, so we don't want to get too carried away. We need to figure out how to get that overlay to work again. I don't. I remember messing around in the settings and trying to fix it, and I couldn't quite find it in the settings. So I'll have to look again, so you guys can see when I get achievements. Far other than the few missing pieces, not all the pieces on the car look like they're completely destroyed. Well, that does. I don't know, not so much. So we're missing some parts, but we seem to have enough parts to work with. So again, that's a good sign. Because it means there's less likely to be issues going forward. We know there's a missing suspension arm. We know we need these. We're grabbing the things we know we can't fix, or I could have noticed we're missing. Hopefully, we can fix everything else. Okay. <clears throat> Part of my theory is why don't we do the back too, but it. It's one of those complex backs, and it's missing its own parts as well, so we'll hold off on that. Let's do this real quick. Oops. Let's take apart a good one, just because why not? Make this take longer than it needs to. Not as much, not as forgiving as I thought it was going to be. <clears throat> well, we're getting there. Okay. I noticed we fixed the suspension cross member, that's good. As far as everything else goes, I'm not so sure. Okay, 
Okay, so we gotta get in this loop back. We're gonna need a steering knuckle. Okay, we didn't fix the other suspension arm. That's a shame. Both of those, both of those. I only have one of these, so that, that, that tells us we need to buy another one, which was missing from the car. How much we can really do about that? <clears throat> oh my god, it's starting to look like a car again. Alright, that should be pretty settled. You ever move faster than the game can actually keep up with? I kinda hate when that happens, because you're pressing the button and it's not doing it fast enough for you. Oh, we're short of caliper. I thought we actually had one. Or did it... Oh, maybe I broke it. Maybe I broke it. I thought we had... Or it... Oh, you know what? I know what it is. It's gotta be that. So, like, we didn't have either of those. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Now we know there's a crap ton of stuff missing here. Let's figure out what's missing, shall we? So it's eight and eight, so we know it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we need two of those to sway. I don't think the links are in there either, so we were uh luckily they're pretty easy to see. They're very specific looking, so we can already order that. Um we need two of these. It's missing the piece that goes in the center, I think. It's on both sides it's on both sides too. Uh this is all in here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I think I grabbed that already. So let's go ahead and dis. Oh, you know what? Let's now disassemble. And let's see what we can repair. And then. Oh, well, you know what I didn't do? Okay, we'll figure it out. Oh, that's freaking. That's destroyed. The other one looks okay, though. Eh, it's orange. Orange can usually implies that it might be salvageable. I said might. There's something else we gotta consider. That looks pretty salvageable right there. Barely looks run now. It, it looks it looks it is more run down than it looks apparently. Oh, it's missing a top, so that worked out in our favor that we ordered them the way we did. 
This one looks like it's missing a bushing, unless I took it out earlier. That's why this is a pain in the butt when you have a car that's missing a lot of parts. It's not just a guaranteed fee amount of money you're going to have to pay to repair it. You know, to restore it, because you've got to buy the missing parts. You don't get the opportunity to fix them. So there's that element to it that kind of sucks. And especially if it's an expensive part, like that suspension arm's like about 100 bucks or so. And, you know, that, that all adds up. It's missing one of those lower ones here, I think. So let's go ahead and repair what we've got and hopefully hope for the best. Hope, and hope for the best, rather. Well, it looks like we're going to get an opportunity to fix both of the spring caps. That's nice. I only saw one of those, I think, so... this I mean this is cool I like how there's a beer there I hope that's what that is drinking beer while fixing cars all right let's head over here good we were able to fix the expensive piece No, we don't have two of those. Hold off on that one. Just because I think we have it, but I don't know. I don't remember off the top of my head if we do or not. I think we only have one, though, so. Find out soon enough. Ooh, we didn't fix that either. The one thing I thought I put up there, I guess I didn't. Okay, we only did have one of these. We need a we need two calipers and a cylinder. So let's
should have everything done pretty much. So you reassemble this guy. Whoa, I thought I, I guess I didn't order that. It's always something. There is no rod that goes in there. It's so strange because there's no back axle or drive shafts. So maybe it's only, oh, you know what? It's probably only rear or front driving, which might explain why. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. If it's not required for the car, it's not required. But somebody see if they look into that. It could be a four -wheel, forward wheel drive car. It's probably what's going on. Why we don't see it back uh drive shaft. Okay. So if we take a look at all of our pieces here, it's all accounted for. It looks like. Um let's go ahead and do some of the usual suspects. Let's tune the car. Make sure its alignment is correct. That way when we go to test drive it, if it starts driving all over the place, we know it's not the tire alignment because we did it. And we've been doing it to every car since. Let's paint it. Uh, hmm. Let's look at liveries first. Mm. Fancy! Yeah, that's easy. It's really just the two. This doesn't seem like a high performance engine, and it might be a better Katsumoto engine later, but I do worry that we may not get an opportunity to use this. So let's go with this for now. And then let's go with like a gray. It looks pretty good, gray. Like a dark gray, maybe. Yeah. I don't want metallic. It's not a metallic car. Let's go with gloss. It's fiberglass, so it should look like it. Over to the dyno and give her a run. And let's see, 108 horsepower, 170 NM. It's not a very powerful car. Which probably means our upgrades to the car may not amount to that much either. But we'll see. You don't know until you test it. So, 50 horsepower, 70 NM, less than 50% of an improvement, So, but it's still an improvement, so it's not the end of the world. Get the giddy, Katsumoto.
Um, let's go ahead. Still trying to get to top speed here. May start running out of track. So top speed is 214. 214 kilo kilometers per hour. Yes, I say kilometers. For those of you wondering, I've lived in in Europe for a while, so that's why I say kilometers instead of the Amer the Americanized kilometers. And it makes sense to call it kilometers. It really does. Centimeters, millimeters, decimeters, hectometers, kilometers. Just saying. I do understand that argument. <laughs> there are things, though, in European and British English that I disagree with. Um, but that's not one of them. All right. Anywho, enough of my internal weirdness for that. Let's take a look at our thingy here. So the profit theoretically is roughly, okay. So I think they get the profit based on the buy price kind of, because we've clearly, I don't know. It looks like we spent nine and eight would be seventeen eight fifty so thirty two thirty three thousand we spent thirty three thousand thirty five thousand plus the buy price of the car you're looking at fifteen thousand dollar profit so I don't know where they're getting their profit from and it maybe again I it could be just me not understanding it again maybe the 8800 is part of the regular parts value. I just don't know. Um, and it's something maybe I'll have to look into, see if anybody has solved this conundrum of how do they come up with their part values? Um, how do they come up with it at all? Because it doesn't make, at least to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So it is something that begs the question, like, if we were to start making money off these cars, how much money could we actually make? Because is the profit thing telling the profits telling us the truth? Is that an accurate representation of what we're getting money wise? If we're not, then the profit number means nothing to us, really. But that's why I I I want to. That's why I question it because it's a very intricate question um, that requires a significant answer. Um, so it is one of the things I do want to see and look into at some point. And try to figure out, are we really making that much money off the car? Because if the sell value is what it's... If the sell value is what they said it was, then that would... But we barely had very... But we only paid 2000 for the car in its current condition. How much money did we really make is the question of the day. And I just... You know, we did the math one time earlier with a different car. So... I mean, we could try that math. Well, we didn't actually. I didn't do the profit. I don't think. But if we sat down, I probably could do the profit with this car, and see if their numbers make sense, and then try to figure that out uh, for another time. It is something that is on my mind. I don't understand how they're. Again, I don't under quite understand how they're getting their numbers, and I am curious to see how they're getting their numbers, because it it would dictate how we start repairing cars and knowing how much money we are actually going to get going forward. So anywho, this is a really great place for us to stop right now. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv such as car studios for more live gaming action. And when we come back, we got the ribs and the star line to work on, um, which I think is a V six. Uh, it could be a V eight. It could be a V eight, like a, like a, 
lateral V8 or something. Uh, I'm actually curious now. I see one, two, three, four, five. It's a V6. Um, so we're going to be working on our first V6 car, complete V6 car, from top to bottom, and customizing it up and making it look nice. This car is relatively intact. It's missing two wheels, but no, it's missing three wheels, actually. It only has one. So it's got quite a bit of work cut out for it. It is a sports car, um, so definitely going to probably be worth a lot of money once it's done. And it's probably going to be worth a lot of money uh, if we need that money, if we need money later in the game, which we are getting down to that point where it should be start be be should start being a minor concern, because after this car we have three more cars left, and like I said, if we hit that hundred grand. Uh, limit that I'm going to limit myself to we're going to have to hold on to that car and bring in a couple others to repair in order to get our profits back up so we can start stashing and kind of again collecting and hoarding new cars I don't know, hoarding's the wrong word but definitely because we want to be able to start you know rebuilding these cars uh, and whatnot and this is a v6 as well but this is a much more complex v6 engine according to this so yeah I guess this is a v6 yeah it's a more complex V6. So, anyhow, I don't want to get into that uh, until we're ready. So, yeah, I want to work on this <coughs> on this bad boy um, because there's also a specialty engine block as well. Do uh, 16 D uh, 16 Doc B two T. So that's that's one I don't even think we've ever worked on. Um, and it's got a really sal looks like a salvageable engine block. So again, this this car is showing a lot of promise for profit. Um, and it's got a lot of its uh, got a lot of features still kind of attached to the car, so we'll have to see how that plays out going forward. So anyway, thanks for stopping by, guys, and we'll see you guys next time.